Good morning. Thanks for coming today. We have some uh, breaking news in the Daytona serial killer case. As you know, back in 2005, we had, uh, 2005, 2006, we had uh, three killings. The one in 2005, uh, Lucretta Gunther was uh, murdered uh, and had a gunshot wound to the head. In 14, uh, in 2006, Julie Green was also murdered in a similar fashion, gunshot wound to the head. Also in 2006, Awana Patterson was also murdered the same uh, modus. So when you looked at this, we knew we had a situation here where it was probably the same person committing these crimes and we had a serial killer. So working together with all our law enforcement partners, as you see up here, we made this a priority aggressively trying to, to figure this out. There was also another murder that happened in 2008 at the time that we don't know at this point in time if it's related, we're still investigating that. Uh, as the years go by, and, we, and, and one thing we do in law enforcement, we just don't come to a dead end and say, okay, the case is over. We continue to work and work and work, utilizing technology, DNA, and other technology to try to solve every open case and get closure for the, the victim and the victim's family members. I can tell you that uh, a lot of uh, forensic evidence was collected at those scenes and it was part of the investigation. The, the people here behind me never let up. Uh, Detective Dave Denardi, who was the lead investigator, did a phenomenal job uh, working on this case uh, with the DNA. And I can tell you, in March of, uh, of, of 2016, Palm Beach County had a similar type of murder uh, in their jurisdiction. So uh, they located male DNA on their case, and we linked that, that came back to our suspect. So at which time we started, we started a joint investigation with Palm Beach County uh, Sheriff's Office and Daytona Beach Police Department uh, to try to link these together. Uh, evidence came back and uh, through some other forensic means and, and some investigative skills, we were actually able to develop a suspect. Uh, suspect's name is Robert Tyrone Hayes. He's a black male, 312 of 82. Uh, we can link him here to our city during the time of our murders and Palm Beach County had made an arrest during that time. Uh, I'm sorry, Palm Beach County made an arrest yesterday in reference to their homicide. At this point in time, we have not charged him yet with ours, but we, we have linked him through forensic evidence to three of our murder victims. Uh, I'll defer that part to State Attorney R.J. Larissa. Uh, at this point in time, the case is still active. We are working with uh, Palm Beach Garden, I'm, I'm correct, with Palm Beach County to uh, jointly on this case so we can get a, a, a solid, solid case and get this murderer, disgusting, serial killer who's off the streets now so he never gets out. So uh, at the time, during this investigation, uh, Sheriff, now Sheriff Chitwood was the chief. When he came to our department in 2006, he took this department to a new level as far as let's go do everything we can to fight crime, let's get it with technology, let's, let's embrace DNA technology. And he was the guiding force driving us to do that. Uh, I'm going to bring him up here now. He's the sheriff. He can add a little bit more in as he was the chief of police at that time. Sheriff Chitwood. Thank you, Greg. Yes, appreciate, appreciate the Thank you. Uh, for me, you know, for, for the ten and a half years as the police chief, I think the only thing I think I left unfilled was to finish this job off. And I know that Craig and these outstanding men and women here, uh, Al, uh, retired NYPD or retired uh, Yonkers uh, police commissioner, we had retired detectives that helped us during a downtime. Uh, People may think, what were they doing over the 10 years? They were doing everything they could humanly possibly do, following every lead that they could and using modern technology to bring this to a close. And, and I just can't tell you how proud I am of Chief Capri and how proud I am of the men and women of the Daytona Beach Police Department. Uh, a lot of them aren't here. There are folks that worked on this case and poured their heart and soul into this from FDLE, uh, from the Sheriff's Office, from all over that, to try to bring closure to these families. And the fact that they were relentless the Tony Beach Police Department was relentless, and Palm Beach the County, uh, what they're doing down there is outstanding. And somebody has brought the justice now uh, for these murders. And I know I spoke to one of the family's uh, victim, uh, victims' families the last night again today. They are absolutely ecstatic. They didn't think they'd be alive to see this day come. And again, I cannot tell you how proud I am of the Daytona Beach Police Department and the leadership of Craig Capri and where we are today. RJ? This was a, these were brutal crimes. And the state attorney's office is, is very fortunate to have the caliber of law enforcement folks that we have working these cases. Think about it, from 2005, 2006, 2008, and then another crime in Palm Beach County. All of those cases linked 
by forensic evidence. It's not just, it's, it's not just uh, working the streets anymore. It's working with DNA. It's working with technology. We are truly in a brave new world, and we have brave folks that are helping put these cases together. The, the investigations are ongoing in the Daytona Beach cases so that we can make sure that we bring justice. And when I say justice, folks say that word a lot, and I'm not sure they know what it means. But what it means in this case is to hold the individual accountable for these brutal and senseless violent murders. Thank you. My name is Lee Massey. I'm special agent in charge of for FDLE of the Orlando region, uh, and we had the lab that was involved in the DNA process. This case actually started way before I came to FDLE, uh, but as is the case in many facets of law enforcement, technology continues to improve and law enforcement continues to capitalize on those improvements. In this case, we used a, a, a concept called genetic genealogy as part of the DNA process. And genetic genealogy is a very new uh, investigative tool in, in our area. Uh, Commissioner Swearingen from FDLE made a huge commitment almost a year ago to the day to bring genetic genealogy and its capabilities to the forefront in this area. Uh, we have a chief, forensic, a chief of forensics who has become extremely versed in this, in this style of investigative tools. Um, so we are extremely honored uh, at the collaborative effort of all the law enforcement entities that have been mentioned today, the state attorney's office, and the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to work together to bring some type, and I don't know if the word is closure or peace or justice, to the families of these victims. And that's ultimately what we're all here to try and do. Um, but I will tell you this, you've heard a lot of comments made about the great police work that goes into this investigation. As great as genetic genealogy looks like it's gonna be for us, none of this happens if there's not great police work at the initial crime scene and the ability to capture the evidence that has been contained, kept, uh, the integrity of the, of, the, of the evidence kept in place until technology was able to come to a place where we could go back and use that evidence again. So I give a lot of, uh, of uh, compliments and a lot of recognition to the law enforcement agencies at the original scene some 15, 14, 15 years ago. Uh, and I'm proud to sit with FDLE as we bring this new genetic genealogy technology to the forefront. And I'm not going to try and speak to the science of it, because those are scientists and I'm a cop. Uh, but I will tell you that the, that the tool in and of itself is an amazing tool. And, and, and for us to be able to bring some type of resolve, closure to this type of case, uh, I'm extremely proud to be a part of that. And from Commissioner Swearingen, the, the commitment that FDLE has made to make this happen uh, is outstanding. So thank you. And I'll just echo, like, like they were saying, everybody up here, all the law enforcement uh, leaders, this wasn't one agency, one per it was a team effort to get closure for, this families, for these families and get this killer off the streets. And that's the one great thing about law enforcement. Everybody works together. There's no egos, no attitudes. Everybody has one common goal, is justice. Working together to do that. And when you work together as a team, you can, you can do anything. And I think... Uh, I'm just so proud of my detectives, especially because these detectives work around the clock, not just on these type of, on this case, but other cases, just to get closure for these victims and to do the right thing. So uh, I can't be more happy today that we got this killer off the street, so nobody else can become a victim. And now we uh, we're just going to finish up some uh, tie some loose ends up and then move forward with with, with going after this guy, prosecuting him for these uh, these three uh, murders, and, and go from there. So we'll open up the questions right now. When do you hope, Patricio? Oh. Hey Chief, uh, I just I just had a question. Um, I I did originally cover the story, but I reviewed all the articles published already, yes. and there was so much speculation as to who the suspect might have been. Did this guy at any time come up during your investigation in any of one of the victims? Yes, he did, and I'm not going to comment too much on that right now. But yeah, his his name did pop up earlier in the investigation, uh, but uh, you know, we didn't have enough ever, ever, uh, evidence at that time to even. At that point, I didn't even think he was leaving a link to it. There were so many people we interviewed. Hell, they, they swabbed all of us. <laughs> they swabbed all the police officers at the time, you know. So, I mean, anybody that, you know, everybody could, you know, you don't know. So let's like, let's just, whatever we can to, to clear this case we're going to do. So we interviewed hundreds of people, and he was one of them, yes. That's right. How soon do you want to press charges? How soon do you want to press charges? 
here? I'm going to defer that question to R.J. Lorenzo. How soon do we get? Uh, we're going to get with the Daytona Beach Police Department, continue to work on on uh, tying up, as Chief Capri said, some loose ends. Uh, we will file the charges at the appropriate time. He's in jail. He's not getting out on murder charges, first degree charges in Palm Beach County. We're work working very closely with the Palm Beach County State Attorney's Office. That's the 15th Judicial Circuit to make sure that we help them put together the, the best case they can put forward. They've already arrested him and charged him with the homicide down there. So we've got time to be able to uh, work with them and work on the case and, and put, to, put together a case that'll make sure that justice is a reality for the folks. Here. And a follow-up to that, has he been arraigned there yet? I think he's having his first appearance this morning. Are Would you expect him to be involved at any point? I believe so. I just so. said his name. Yes. You did? Yeah. Could you please His name is Robert Tyrone Hayes. He's a black male, date of birth 312 of 1982. Oh, Chief, That's very minor about, criminal history, just traffic related stuff. Can you talk about Mr. Hayes a little bit during the yeah. time he was here? Uh, Where was he? Was he, uh, how old was he? Uh, uh, 37. Yeah. So the young man at the time, was he in school here? What uh, was the situation? That, at the point in time we believe he was in school here, he was a student here, yes. Where? At Bethune Cookman University. And, and uh, as I recall, the profile, uh, FBI came out with the profile. Yes. You know, such an odd difference here. It was, you know, I remember back in the day, maybe middle-aged, Caucasian, married, maybe even Leo. I remember all That's that. That's why they asked us to take swabs, and yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> then again, how do you predict things? I mean, you could sit there and analyze things like, like sports analysts. They're going to say this team's going to win, the team loses by 50 points. So I think, you know, nothing's, nothing's definitive until you can get to the point where you get that DNA, DNA evidence and link it up. So I'm not really concerned about that because we had nothing of what a suspect was and able to come from nothing to determine a suspect through DNA and get the actual guy in custody, that's huge. So uh, I don't put too much into that uh, as far as, you know, maybe they were off on their profile. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's, they're humans, make, making, uh, I guess, educated theories and guesses on what they believe to be based on previous patterns. Any color, any ethnic? Uh, absolutely. Yes. Well, under what circumstances was the interview, though, back in 2000? Uh, I believe back there we were looking at the gun purchases at Buck's Gun Rack, and he had purchased the gun there. Oh. So, and then we were looking at interviewing everybody who bought that particular <clears throat> gun at the time. So, but they had no physical at that time, that evidence that would match up uh, forensic evidence. Yes. Uh, Chief, uh, we are saying that DNA from the victim at Palm Beach matched yes. a couple of victims in Daytona. Yes. Uh, which two victims were those here in Daytona? That, that I don't know. Uh, Julie Green. Was it Green, Green and Gunther? Gunther? Yeah, Green and Gunther, because I think Patton was uh, late, later in 06, and we have nothing on Gage. Yeah, so it was uh, Gunther and Green. Look at it, Gunther and Julie Green. And those are the only victims that you've been able to bring to this individual? Well, there's one more also. That's okay. uh, going to be Pat, Miss Patton. Okay. I want a Patton, so three. But and I'm just glad that the, the family members have been notified. I know Mrs. Gunther has been notified, the, the grandmother. Her mom has been notified. And that, that, that's, a, that's a huge step for them to start that healing process and the closure process, knowing that there's not a killer on the streets that, that murdered their loved one. He's in custody now. And I have total confidence in the state attorney's office here that, like, like RJ said earlier, they are going to make sure every I is dotted, every T is crossed. There's no need to rush in here and, 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 and try to do something when we have the time to sit back and cover everything so this horrible individual, this murderer, does not get out ever again to commit these crimes. Chief, there is that gap between 2008 when the last fossil fuel yeah. was in 2016. Do you know what he was doing during that time frame? Are there any I don't other cases know. you think he might be connected to? You, you never know. I don't know. That's the point. We remember it stalled. We didn't know what was going on when it stopped after 06. And I can tell you, and like, like the sheriff said, we've had people working on this. Al McElvoy retired, coming in, helping us out. A lot of retired guys, uh, our retired guys, are still working the case over the last 10, 12 years, just trying to get anything we could, following up on every lead possible, phone calls, still interviewing people, looking around. So. Uh, he might have went quiet for a while. I don't know what's in the mind of a killer. Uh, I'm sure we'll, that might come out down the road as we get more into the cases and stuff, but it, it, it just picked up again in 16, it looks like, and then now we were able to link that. So. Do you know when he moved out of Daytona Beach? That I don't know. I would assume based on this, probably around the same time that the murder stopped. What did he do for a living? And any idea how he came across these women? I have no idea. Or, or I have no, no idea. How confident are you that you can link him to the fourth murder? N not at all. Not at all. The fourth one was found uh, in, in a wooded area, kind of similar, had a, a gunshot mm -hmm. wound to the head, but it was in the woods for, the victim, unfortunately, was in the woods for, for, for a long, long time, and there was decomposition, and 
I don't know what, you know, it's still part of the investigation. We still have some work, you know, we're going to still follow up. We're not going to let up, but, but we feel confident with the three solidly with the three that I mentioned earlier. But just to confirm, the DNA evidence only links two of those three? Two, but there's other forensic evidence involved. That links the Talk a little bit about the importance of gene genealogy when it comes to solving uh, cases like this. Well, I, I mean, just look at this case. It's been it's been a cold case for 14 years. Uh, genetic genealogies come on to the scene, and uh, today we're we're standing here announcing the arrest of an individual that committed these heinous crimes so many years ago, with the with the probability of, of linking them to multiple uh, incidents in Daytona Beach. So. Uh, I think the fact that we're able to do that speaks to the value of genetic genealogy. And, you know, law enforcement, we're constantly improving technology in a, in a, in a bunch of different areas. And this just happens to be an area of science uh, through the DNA process. You know, there was a time when latent fingerprints didn't really give us the value that it does now. So the, the evolution of that, of that capability is, is phenomenal. And for us, it's it, the, the ability to have this type of technology now is it goes to the core of why we all do this job and it's quality of life and it's justice for victims and that's what we do we don't do this to to stand at a press conference we do this because we want we want families to have a quality of life we want people in our communities to be able to thrive and when we have these types of heinous acts our number one focus is to make sure we find those that are responsible for that and hold them accountable for their acts so genetic genealogy is phenomenal i um you know, I applaud my boss, the commissioner, for making the commitment that he has made to this tool, and uh, I only see it getting better. It all starts with technology and being forward thinking. And, and I got to be honest with you, had Sheriff Chip would not come here as chief, I don't know if we'd be standing here today because before that, we didn't we didn't really know much about technology, embrace technology. It was a different mindset. He was able to get us to where we need to be, not only with DNA but with body cameras and tasers and less lethal use of uh, de-escalation. So all that comes in. And now you look at it, it, it it's it, without that type of forethinking and technology, who would have, we might not be here today. So I got to thank the sheriff, to be honest with you, because he took us out of the uh, the 70s and 80s and brought us back into the 2000s, I guess. So, uh, and, I'm, and this is the fruit of the labor. You look down the road years from that. So I just wanted to really touch on that. A lot of agencies aren't as forethinking with technology and maybe sometimes get nervous to use it because they don't know much about it, where we jump in, we embrace it, and we take it to the next level uh, with us in the sheriff's office here and working with state. It's unbelievable. But RJ, why don't you go up and say a few words? Please. Well, um, I think as far as the genetic genealogy goes, uh, Sheriff Chitwood, when he was the chief of police for Daytona Beach, came to me when I was uh, 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 an officer with the Florida Prosecuting Attorneys Association and uh, introduced me to a fellow DA out of uh, Denver, Colorado who was going around the country talking about genetic genealogy and actually gave a presentation to the uh, prosecutors, all 20 state attorneys throughout the state of Florida. And based on that and FDLE's commitment to step up and start working uh, that part of the DNA process, we were able to bring it to Florida. And uh, as the fruit of that, we were able to charge uh, the, the, in, this individual, Hayes, with these murders. Another thing, just to be clear, is that there are the Palm, the Palm Beach County victim and two of the victims here are linked by DNA evidence. Then there are two of the victims here that are linked by forensic evidence, by, by ballistic evidence. So that ties all four of these victims together. The, the fifth victim, if you will, the one who is being looked at, uh, we, we don't have the forensic evidence right now, but the Daytona Beach Police Department, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, all of these folks are working with your state attorney's office to see we will either eliminate or not that, that victim as a potential victim in this case. But this is ongoing. This is an ongoing case with, with investigative techniques that have to play out. And so we're going to be cautious and careful, fair and objective, and we're going to be right when we ultimately make the charging decisions in these cases. Go, Patricio. Hey, Chief, I just wanted to make sure I heard right. Did uh, the state attorney uh, say that although there's no DNA on the other victims, yes. ballistics tests yes. prove that they're connected Forensic all four? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I know you don't want to talk about the Palm Beach case, yes. but um, 
the, this, these killings have been in the mind of our communities for so long that yeah. people are wanting to know that there's a solution. We finally have someone. Yes. Uh, was the victim in Palm Beach similarly executed? I, I, I'm going to have to defer you down there to them. Please talk to them. I don't want to do anything to jeopardize their doing or, or, or step on their toes because I don't know. Well, I, I, I don't think that that's actually an FDLE case. I think that's a law enforcement case. And, oh. and as we do traditional in, in these types of cases, everybody will start comparing notes. Uh, we'll probably put out something to the community if they have any additional information uh, on this individual. Uh, so, so the collaborative effort will continue. The dots will continue to try and be connected, and we'll try and, and identify any potential other cases that may involve this this type of crime, this type, this individual. Uh, but from FDLE's perspective, both on an investigative side and a forensic side, we'll just be part of that process, if that, if that answers your question. Chief. Yeah. Anything else before we wrap up? Uh, quick question. Can yeah. you talk about the suspect's connection to the victims? I understand three out of the four had a prostitution record. Any idea Yeah, it doesn't make any difference to us. We, well, it's a victim of a crime, so. But any idea what caused them to meet? I have no idea they're... at this point in time. Sorry. Ma'am, you had one more? Yeah, I know you all mentioned that you've been talking to the families, so I would like to know, have you talked to the families of all of the victims here in this area, and are any of them still with you? I don't believe so. I believe we talked to, what, one family, Chair? Just, just look with this. You talked to them all? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Dave's favorite thing. Gotcha. <laughs> um, I've spoken to all um, all of the four victims' families yesterday, and se um, several of them are still in the state of Florida. And actually, I think three are, and one of them is out of state. And can you tell me, are any of them still local here in the Daytona Beach area? And what did they say upon talking to you? Uh, none, none of them are in Daytona Beach. I think the closest is in Orlando. But I mean, they were all very. Um, you know, I spoke to them over the phone, and it, you know, their emotions ran. You know, they were happy. Um, you know, they were in a state of disbelief, shock. Um, you know, one of them broke down crying. And Dave, did that include Stacy Gage's family? I did speak to Stacy Gage's family, yes. And Dave was the lead investigator on the case and did a phenomenal job. He's, it all comes down to him and a great job he did. Let's give a round of applause. All right, we're going to wrap that up uh, at this point in time. Uh, RJ, do you expect this person to be prosecuted first in Palm Beach County? As it Absolutely. stands now, probably, but, you know, we're working with them on that. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate the job you do. Have a great day.